ThorChain has just launched Thor names, so we're going to go over what that means and how you can use them on ThorSwap. So Thor names or TNS ThorChain name service is a way to associate a customizable name with your multi-chain wallet addresses. So let's say I bought the Thor name Chad, chad.thor. I can use that name Chad and assign a Bitcoin wallet address, Ethereum wallet address, and so on. And that Thor name Chad is all I would need to send my funds to my other wallet addresses or to perform a swap to another chain without having to keep track or connect all of my various wallets. So this one Thor name, Chad, in this example, can be assigned a Thor address, a Bitcoin address, an Ethereum address, and so on, and allows for a more seamless and easy experience depending on what you're trying to do, what kind of swaps, or how you're managing your funds. So let's go through how to register a Thor name, how to change the addresses associated with your Thor name, and then how to send funds around and perform swaps using your Thor names. So on ThorSwap, there's a Thor name tab now. I'm just gonna connect a wallet now, so I'm ready. You just need to connect your ThorChain Rune wallet addresses. These are paid for using Rune. So I've got my wallet connected with some Rune ready. Now let's search up a name that we want. If the name is not yet taken, it will show available right here. You can choose now how long you want to renew this name for. The fee is 10 rune to register the name, but one rune per year to keep it running. So 11 rune gives you one year, or I could do many more years right off the start and just pay one more rune per year that I want to reserve it. So let's just start with the standard one year and pay the 11 rune to purchase our Thor name. That will push to our connected wallet. You can use whichever Thor chain wallet that you normally use with ThorSwap. In this example, this is XDeFi, so it pushed to my connected XDeFi wallet and I need to sign that transaction. And that takes just a few seconds. It's just a transaction on the Thor chain blockchain, so very quick. And now that Thor name shows owned by you when that wallet is connected. If you want to extend how long you own this Thor name, then you can simply do that here. You just select how many years, pay that many rune, click update and sign that. And of course, this just shows expiration date that your Thor chain address owns it. And then here's where it gets interesting. So by default, only the Thor chain address that you bought this Thor name with is assigned to the Thor name you just got. But for the other chains, you are going to have to manually update them. So for the example, let's assign a BNB address and then we'll go ahead and do some swaps and sends and things like that using it. But you would have to do this manually for every chain that you want to assign an address to this Thor name. But that allows you to use multiple different types of wallets. You could have your Thor address at, from your XDeFi wallet, your Bitcoin Ledger wallet, and so on. You can customize it however you'd like. And to update addresses only costs the 0.02 Rune transaction send fee. So let's just grab the BNB address that I want to assign. So I'll copy that from my wallet and I'll paste that in here. Confirm it's the right address. And then let's update this. So we can see the transaction amount is zero, just the 0 0.02 Rune network fee. So confirm that. Then let's see if that worked. Just going back to this edit button you can see now there's a Thor address here. That was the one we purchased it with, so that automatically assigned. And then now I have a Binance address also associated with the same Thor name. And again, you would go through and do this for all the chain addresses that you want to assign for every supported chain. And these are not permanent decisions. I can update this Thor address. I can change that BNB address that I just assigned. So you're not locked in with this. Now let's do some fun stuff and let's do a send. So let me connect my BNB wallet as well. So now if I wanted to send any assets on any chain to that Thor name that I got, all I would have to do for the recipient address on ThorSwap is enter the Thor name. And you can see it auto populated the correct address for the correct chain of the funds that I'm sending. So because I'm sending Rune here, it auto populated to my Thor Rune address. So I could send Rune just using only the Thor name that I bought and not needing to have the address handy. 
success. Yes, that was to and from myself, but would work just the same with different wallets. Uh, same thing for BNB. If I, I'll just type it again for sake of the example, but now it auto populates the BNB address that I assigned to that Thor name. So I could just send some BNB to Chris Hemsworth. Sign that. And the BNB send was a success. Now you can even use this in swaps as a custom recipient. So let's say I wanted to swap from Rune to Bitcoin. Let's actually quickly just assign a Bitcoin address to the same Thor name. Copy this Bitcoin address from my XDFi. Go back to Thor name. Go to the edit button on the Thor name that I want to edit. Select the chain, Bitcoin. Paste that. Update and sign with that Rune transaction fee. Confirm that. And now let's go back to that swap. So let's say I wanted to swap some Rune to Bitcoin and I don't even have my Bitcoin wallet connected right now. I can just go to settings here and go to set custom recipient, turn that on. And then here I can enter either a Thor name or a custom recipient address. So in this case, I'll just enter my Thor name. It automatically recognizes that this Thor name is associated with that Bitcoin address. And I can just go ahead and do the swap and sign it. Then that swaps pending, but that native Bitcoin is going to show up at my Bitcoin wallet address associated with that Thor name. So one warning about this is understand that these Thor names are not universal across all of crypto. So we're talking about within the Thor chain ecosystem, in this case, on ThorSwap directly. So if you're using MetaMask or you're sending funds from a centralized exchange, you can't just enter Chad or Chris Hemsworth and expect it to work properly. This will only work within supported interfaces and supported wallets. So be very careful and never send funds to an address if you're not sure that that address is going to work in that interface. So for right now, that is what you can do with your Thor names. You can purchase them. You can assign and change different addresses for all the different supported chains. You can send funds to and from Thor names, and you can swap to a recipient using a Thor name. In the future, we'll likely see some more functionality like the ability to fully transfer ownership of a Thor name. Right now, the Thor address that purchases the Thor name is the owner. Even though you can change the Thor address that it's pointing to, you can't fully transfer the ownership as of right now, but that will definitely come in the future. And with that will likely come secondary marketplaces for Thor names. And somewhere around this video, you'll see a link to this Medium article with some more details. For example, they are limited to one to 30 hexadecimal characters, so numbers and letters, and a few special characters, dashes, underscores, and pluses. And they are not case sensitive. Thor names were also an important piece of affiliate fees within ThorChain. Because ThorChain uses the memo field of ascend to instruct ThorChain what to do with a swap, there are sometimes limits on just how much can fit. So Thor name allows for a shortened version of that that will all fit within the memo. So, for example, this allows for ThorSwap to now collect the exchange fee for UTXO chains like Bitcoin. So now that swap volume can also reward VThor holders. So that's what's new with Thor names on ThorChain. And that is how you can access all the current functionality using ThorSwap.